with both Aliyah and Genuine finding success with Timbaland's production in the mid-90s, they were each bound to eventually work together, especially being part of the Super Friends crew along with Missy and more. As all of their careers got bigger, some of their friendships would be tested as the years went on. And unfortunately, we weren't talking when she passed. She weren't, wasn't talking to Timbaland, or I think her and Missy fell out as well. Oh, wow. But we still had love, everyone was still loving and all yeah. that. But it's, it's just the business, and when you're young, people can um, separate you, yeah. you know, and you don't know how or why. What exactly caused this rift between Ali and Genuine in her last days? Let's talk about it. By 1996, with the release of Aliyah's One in a Million album and Genuine's debut album, Genuine, The Bachelor, the sounds of popular R&B took a revolutionary shift with Timbaland crafting the bulk of each album. Aliyah and Genuine would first work together when he guest starred in her One in a Million music video. He also featured on the One in a Million remix, which was a part of the soundtrack for the movie Sprung, starring Tisha Campbell and Paula J. Parker. After seeing the chemistry between them in the music video, many would speculate that they were dating at the time, which they both denied. Aliyah once told Vibe magazine, I think rumors are hilarious. I don't pay them any attention. It goes in one ear and out the other. When you're in this business, you hang out with people and people are like, I wonder are they seeing each other? I never dated Jay. I never dated Genuine. Knowing and sympathizing with what Aliyah had went through, especially with her first album. And being nine years her senior, Genuine declared, I made up my mind that I was not gonna to step to her like that. It worked out better that way because we were friends and we could act silly. Aliyah and I just enjoyed each other's company. That always been the case, it seems. Once two of the hottest stars at the time do a music video together or a song together, all of a sudden, they're a couple. All of a sudden, they just have to be dating, especially if the on-screen chemistry seemed too good. Regardless, Aliyah and Genuine continued to build their friendship and she would even babysit for Genuine when he would go out to clubs sometimes. They would even go on tour together, a part of the 1997 Budweiser Superfest, which also included Mary J. Blige, Drew Hill, and Bone Thugs and Harmony. While touring, they shared many fun times together, even some that was to be unspoken of, according to R&B veteran Tink, who sung background for both of them on this tour. Aliyah and Genuine would collaborate again for his second album, 100% Genuine, on the song Final Warning. You know, do you think you're playing games? No, I'm Are you not playing, playing games, games with me? You look the same. He also had fun memories recording that with Aliyah. Me and Baby Girl, we were in the studio, we were doing um, Final Warning on 100% uh, Genuine. And it took us like about 20 minutes to do it, but we stayed in there the whole day because I loved her. She loved me, Timbaland, Missy, everybody. We just had fun. So that was one of the days that um, we stayed in there all day, but it only took us like 20 minutes to do the right. actual work. So. Around this time, Ali would executive produce for the Romeo Must Die soundtrack as this was her first major movie role. Along with creating and selecting her own songs for the soundtrack, she included some of her other favorite artists like Destiny's Child and of course, Genuine. She also began working on her third album, which would become her self-titled. Still searching for the right songs, she came across a track Genuine recorded for his second album that did make the cut called Miss You. She called him and with his cosign, recorded her own version that night that she hoped would make the track list. However, Aliyah's label Blackground quote unquote thought the song was no smash hit, no smash record. And they left it off the album only to be ironically used as a posthumous tribute single in 2002, becoming one of Aliyah's biggest hits. After learning of the accident by phone call, Genuine remembers being devastated, which was even more realized when he was pictured leaving her funeral. From there, just days later, he would appear with Missy and Timberland on stage at the 2001 VMAs and part of a moving tribute which also featured Janet Jackson and Aliyah's brother, Rashad. Months later, he would sing on and appear in a music video for Missy Elliott's single, Takeaway, where she would dedicate to the memory of Aliyah. You ever remember that part where he reaches and touches her face in the water? That part always gets me. It also came out that Ali and Genuine were originally cast in lead roles for the movie You Got Served, but it was put on hold because of Ali's passing. The director decided to keep their names for the characters, with Elgin, Genuine's real name by the way, being recast to Marcus Houston, and Leah being recast to Jennifer Freeman. For Ali's 15th anniversary, Genuine will come under major scrutiny when he posted and mistake social media influencer B. Simone for Aliyah 
in an Instagram post. Now, genuine, really? He knew better. Oh my God. This really made people question their friendship simply because he couldn't even tell the difference between a lookalike and the real Aliyah. And to be honest, they don't even look that much alike. Stemming from Genuine's interview that revealed their falling out, it all seemed to do with business. Genuine never really went into specifics, but it most likely had to do with the shady business Black Round Records would become known for with Aliyah and Genuine caught in the middle. Genuine even had a falling out with Timberland as well years later since he felt like he ditched him to focus on producing and promoting more popular acts like Justin Timberlake and Nelly Furtado. As a side note, Genuine recently became a viral meme because of his eccentric dancing choices. He took it in stride but gave a bittersweet response to the social media attention he created saying, I didn't even know I was newsworthy, funny or not. The thing is, most of us who are old enough to remember know that Genuine was always extra in his performances. Let's flash back to 106 in Park, shall we? Yeah. The industry is harsh and this shows that one decade you can be the hottest thing out and one of the biggest heartthrobs. Then the next, you can feel forgotten and almost non-existent and become a laughing stock. Of course, every major artist has their heyday, and while some remain active, the others bow out gracefully. Genuine still has a love for singing and performing, and of that, a few quirky seconds of it goes viral with mostly the intention to ridicule him. God forbid, something were to happen to him, the same ones teasing him would then be showing how much love they have for him after it was already too late. Oh, Pony was one of my favorite songs. In those jeans and differences were some of my favorite songs. It's like, now you wanna show him love? When well, just last week, you were basically teasing him and reposting memes. This is just a hypothetical situation, but as time has shown, it really happens all the time. Bringing it back to Aaliyah, no one could imagine what would happen to her on her way back from the Bahamas. But some of her friendships were left shaky because they never got a chance to reconcile and make up. In the end, the drama, petty arguments, and holding grudges are definitely not worth it. As life has shown, tomorrow is promised to no one. Nevertheless, both Aliyah and Genuine created classics and have left their mark in not only R&B music, but in pop culture in general. Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video. What touched my heart one one time is Missy called me and she said she had a dream and she said she woke up crying and I was like so what happened she was like it was it was about baby girl because yeah. we call Aaliyah baby baby girl and she said she told me to tell you that she's not mad at you and she forgives gives you and dude we bawled crying right. because I always had that empty space in my heart do, yeah. do you understand what it feels like to have somebody that you love and get called and they were in a plane after that like no dude Aaliyah was deeply loved and would be so deeply missed i think i speak for all of us standing here when i say she was definitely one in a million